Yo, welcome back. It's Moda, and it's very warm, but that's okay. Live every moment, uh, of course, by God, Charak Spin. It's live every moment, and then it's like, is it Hito Yobana, I think, is what it says in Katakana. Um, I don't know what that means. Time for a cut-in, because I have learned some stuff over the last uh, 12 hours since I recorded uh, what we were just listening to, Ito Yobana, which I couldn't really figure out what that meant. Every translation I put it through, it came back as one night flower. I'm like, I don't know if that's right. My Japanese is not good enough for me to really understand what it could mean. Well, it turns out one night flower, not too far off. Uh, according to lyricstranslate.com, which is, I was breaking down the lyrics last night. Hito Yobana refers to the Sagaribana, which is a swamp flower that blooms for only one night. It actually looks very cool. Um, Hito Yobana literally means one night flower. And the fact that the word Hito, which means person, I knew that, is contained within it might be a supporting piece of the song's central metaphor. So there's some knowledge on what that katakana portion of the title means number two this isn't related to this song this is related to my last cover of voice on spotify gotchark spin released liner notes and it's the various band members detailing and previewing the song that you are about to listen to again a struggle for me because i speak barely any Japanese whatsoever. So a lot of what I was listening to, I had to feed it through a translator a couple of times to get a better understanding of what they were talking about. So if you watched my cover of Voice and me losing my ever-loving mind as to how difficult it was and how the note progression was so challenging, well, I know who wrote the melody now and I know who I can hold responsible. Hi. And number three, getting back to live every moment, it is, again, Spotify liner notes. Please go check it out. I think it's it's this kind of insight uh, into the songwriting process is very cool, especially coming from a band that has so many talented contributors. Um, I think it's very neat to, to get an understanding of the breakdown and who is bringing what to what song. So on the liner notes for live every moment, it is Hana and it is Tomo Zo. The thing that jumped out to me, which really connects a lot of loose ends about why this song sounds the way it does. I believe at one point they reference working with an Omura-san. And I think that that is Takayoshi Omura, who, if you're not aware, Takayoshi Omura plays guitar for the Kami band for Baby Metal, uh, is in a wildly, wildly talented guitar player. The guy is a savant. I know Takayoshi Omura primarily due to his collaborations with Marty Friedman uh, of Megadeth. I believe somebody had commented on one of my previous videos that Takayoshi Omura was a music instructor to a member of the band or various members of the band, I don't recall. Um, but either way, I think that, that is a great resource and a great set of ears to have when you're putting together a rock album and a metal song. Don't quote me on any of this though, unfortunately. The biggest struggle that I am having right now with my overall fandom of this of, of Gacharik Spin and other Japanese bands is I don't speak barely any Japanese. Uh, I am learning. I want to learn. Go check out the liner notes for yourself if you are somebody that is fluent in Japanese and uh, let me know if what I'm saying and the things that I took from these little clips uh, is accurate. There you go. Three little tidbits. I don't know where I am uh, in this reaction, but it's a day later. I'm rested. Uh, it's not... 95 degrees so I can think a little clearer and get my thoughts out in a more coherent manner. So let's get back to whatever past me was saying about Live Every Moment. Bye. That I love this song and 
I can't wait to get into the reaction. Um, in other Gacharic spin happenings, uh, I also had not seen this. Much like this live performance, I didn't know it was out days before the CDW was released. They also did their winners for the Kachi Kachi Yama reaction. So a little background on this. Uh, if this is, you know, one of the first videos that you're watching from me, I have been a Gacharic Spin fan for really just a couple of months now. I saw them, I saw like a 30 second clip of them on Instagram and was just instantly hooked in. I'm like, what is this? This is incredible. Which is really taking me down this, this long winding road of great Japanese rock music that I didn't know existed until probably the end of May. So fast forward a couple of weeks, uh, I see a post on Twitter, I think it was Twitter, about, hey, do a reaction to our new video, Kachi Kachi Yama. And without thinking, I've always wanted a reason to, you know, get into the YouTube side of things. And I just did a, a reaction. It was a good reason to start, uh, you know, putting some stuff on YouTube and having this, this hobby in my downtime. And it's now turned into something bigger than I thought it was ever going to be at this point. Uh, what I didn't notice was that it was a contest. I was just so excited to be a part of, of this band and, and what they were doing uh, social media wise that I, I rushed to it. So when I saw it was a contest, my brain didn't go contest. Um, and they picked their winner and I'm so happy with the one that they picked. It was one that I had watched. Uh, it had popped up in my algorithm and the thumbnail of uh, a man in a blue wig absolutely drew me in. So they picked Wave Potter. And if you haven't watched it, uh, their video reacting to Wave's reaction was good. But what really had me smiling so big this morning was watching Wave react to them reacting to him. Just the elation, the speechless. Uh, I think at one point they came into his, his live chat. It was just, it was so cool and it was so fun for me to just kind of vicariously live through him in that moment like i really got a lot of enjoyment out of seeing wave react to all of this in real time when i posted mine and then saw that their youtube account uh commented on my video and then later put me uh in their reaction playlist i flipped i was so ecstatic so i couldn't imagine the feeling of of a band that you enjoy sitting and reacting to something that you did so i'm i'm super happy for wave uh, i think they made an excellent choice because his was really really good i would definitely recommend watching and i would also really recommend if you want to feel really like good and smiley go watch wave react to them reacting to him it was so much fun to sit and watch that um but yeah, it's all, it was all really, really fun, uh, which is another reason I'm so down with this band is, you know, if they're doing stuff like this, then, then I feel really good about how I'm spending uh, my free time. But anyway, that's enough rambling. Uh, let's get to my reaction. Always be louder. Is 
a good lead. Very underrated part of Tobo's play. She's a great tap on soloist. The way that resolves, too. Super cool. Your teddy bear hanging from under Oreo's rig? Yes, there is. Oh, it's my right ear. You get the three of them ripping harmonies like that. I mean, they, they, they sound as good as anybody. This is all so good. I look sweaty and sunburned because I am both of those things. I really, and I mean really, like this song. I think this is such a, at its core, just pure metal song. I think it's in E minor, which outside of like C sharp is E minor is like one of my favorite keys to hear music in. And I think the reason why I'm so giddy over this uh, live every moment is because it and I don't again I don't know if it's intentional or not if it's uh, you know more inspirational or it's just you know it's metal sounding like metal this reminds me of so many things about Iron Maiden and I love Iron Maiden it reminds me of Prowler you know right there <laughs> But I mean, that's that's a lot of uh, it's a lot of Iron Maiden songs. I think it's a lot of metal songs in general. I think. That's cool. The Yuri kicks in with the drums. I love that snare ride. Something I noticed, and I get it. This live performance of this song was, to me, kind of different than a lot of the other Gachar Spin live performances I've seen, and I think I know why. This was a very toned down 
performance. And my best guess is that this is a new song and there isn't that 100% rip it while we're out there comfortability factor when you're playing a new song in front of people. Like you can sit there and shred in your studio, in my case, my bed, and feel really great about what you're playing. Then you gotta go out there in front of a couple thousand people and go do it. So I think that was a factor in why this looked the way that it did. Uh, the thing I kept noticing was Tomozo, who I, I've i said, like I never see these guys make mistakes. I'm pretty sure there was like a weird core jump. Like I think it goes you know, from that E to the C to the D. And I think there was some confusion there in the beginning. It's a lot of Tomoza looking over her shoulder, um, which I, I've not... I've not seen from her specifically. She's somebody who, who at, all, at all times seems like she knows exactly what she's doing and how well she's doing it. And the other thing, and I'm only gonna say this one time, it's it's been a criticism, not of any musician or ability. Um, it's a mixing thing. And I don't think I'm alone on this. I will say it one time and I will not harp on it. Make Tomozo louder. Please, the amount of times I've been doing a reaction video, and you can see, I, I can see it when I'm listening to it, is I am like trying to, I, I'm, it's, this is going to sound crazy, but I'm trying to see the sound. As I am listening to this, Tomo is always, almost always in my right ear, so I'm almost like focusing like in my brain, like where is she, where is that sound? Okay. Even in this, when it starts, it sounds like she's playing, her PA is in a different room. Because when Hannah starts singing, when Yuri starts the snare, all of it, you can hear it pretty well. For whatever reason, when I hear these live performances, more often than not, Tomo Zoe's part is buried. And that happens sometimes in the studio stuff. And I don't understand it. She is such a talented guitar player who plays some really imaginative, cool leads. There's an awesome little tap-on solo part. It's not really a solo, it's just a tap-on part. You know, because she can do that crap and, and make it look easy and it fits and it sounds so cool and I like hearing it. What I don't like is struggling to try to hear cool stuff. I want it to be right in my face, right in the fosh with the cool tap-on stuff the chord progressions, the solos, all of it. I want to hear it. And for whatever reason, we take this gal and we bury her in the mix and it makes me crazy. Okay, moving on. The resolve part of, it's like a, I think it's like a sus four that, yeah, my guitar sounds like ass, whatever. But it goes from that. I think that is so, I don't truly understand music theory. Uh, so I might be talking out of my butt, but I can hear the difference when you're going minor, minor, minor. And then you have that beautiful resolve from. Oh, and then speaking of Iron Maiden, you know, really borrowing from, uh, you know, I, the beginning reminded me of Prowler, which is a very old Iron Maiden song. And then the little loop, the something like that, is right out of Hallow Be Thy Name, which is another great Iron Maiden song. That's when Prowler is kind of more obscure. Uh, Hallow Be Thy Name, if, if you know any Iron Maiden, you probably heard that. This is the kind of metal song, like, if it's me, I'm going, guys, I want to start with Live Every Moment. Like, I want to get the crowd into it right from the beginning of the show. I would start with this one. I would love to see what this song looks like live in a couple of months. I could be completely wrong, but to me, I sense a, a, a level of unfamiliarity with a piece. And maybe that's just because the bar has been set so high with this band 
that when I see something that looks different, it really jumps out at me. This is a Moda certified metal banger. I love basically everything about this. It's a 10 out of 10. To me, it's, it's perfection in metal. I would play this for any fan of rock music or metal music that doesn't know this band. I would go, you have to check this out. Um, it's, I love it. I love everything about it. If you haven't, if you're watching me, you probably have listened to all of it. Um, if you haven't, please go listen to W. This is a, a really, really good album that I've had a lot of fun uh, learning, listening to, enjoying in my downtime. Um, but again, if you're here watching me, you're probably, you, you've been a, a GS fan much longer than I have. So thank you. Roll credits. I never would have thought of that. Is that what she's doing? Oh, she's catching, because I'm such a basic guitar player. She's catching the C on the low E string. I think that's what she's doing. 